Hi everyone and welcome along to today's video. So I've put forward six little tips on radiators and heating. I mean this time of the year now the winners well they seem to go wrong the most so here's kind of six popular I've got lots and lots of videos obviously on heating but six of the most popular <laughs> radiator problems heating up or putting in inhibitor in or even just turning them on and off. Here we go. If you've got a radiator um, and it's just not getting hot or it's only getting lukewarm, uh, there's one or two things it could be. Um, if you've already bled it and there's no air in it, then you've exhausted that problem. Do that first. If it's still not working, still not getting really hot or not getting hot at all, then there's one or two things you could do left. One is to turn the radiator off, both ends. Take the radiator right outside and flush it through with clear water and then put it back because it may be sludged up. But if it's quite a new rad like this and it's not going, it's more than likely the system's unbalanced. Um, what that means is you may have had work done in the past, um, an extra rad fitted or one moved or some work done where you've had a radiator removed and put back on the wall and it, it may not be air that's in the system it could be the fact that the system's now unbalanced and you're not getting enough heat to get to this radiator so what to do quite simple go to every radiator in your house every single one upstairs and downstairs and turn them all off on the one valve at the end turn every radiator off except for the one that is not working then put your heating on run it and this rad that wasn't getting any heat should get very nice and hot indeed, it should really warm up. Once it has, because it's normally it's the last rad on the system that goes cold because it's furthest away from the boiler like this one. So what we do is leave them running and go back to each radiator, turn them just half a turn each. Make sure you do them just half a turn and then gradually work around the whole house so that all the radiators are hot including the dead one. Now the one that's closest to your boiler will probably, that radio will only want cracking open a little bit. The ones upstairs will only want cracking open a little bit if you're in a normal house. I'm in a bungalow. But if you're in an average three bed semi, the ones upstairs will only want turning on half a turn because upstairs they take all the heat anyway. Whereas the ones downstairs, they have to be pumped down there and they require more of the pump and more force to get down there. So isolating the ones upstairs down generates more heat to the one that probably isn't going. And that is usually the answer, nine times out of 10. If, so if there's no air in the radiator, try that first. Secondly, try taking the radiator out and flushing it if it's an old radiator, only if it's an old one and it's been a long time. If you've got Furnox in your system, uh, there's no need to take it out at all because it will be quite clear already. So if that's not the answer, you know then the only thing it can possibly be is to shut all those radiators down and force it through to the one that's not going. How often should that be done? Well, draining a central heating system and flushing it through which is like basically running it through outside and letting it flush right through every radiator and draining them all out and then flushing it again filling does take some time which is why plumbers when they do a service will not do this sort of thing added to that uh, is the problem of air locks often when you fill up the central heating system after you drained it uh, you get the dreaded airlock, especially in F and E systems, and that is always a problem. Can take quite a while to sort out. So it's not something you want to do every year, along with <laughs> the servicing of the boiler. Now I've been asked to say to give a, a kind of example of how often this ought to be done, though, to drain and clean the system. You have a magna clean in there um, you could just clean that instead and it would take care of a lot of your problems
I'm going to just drain this radiator and show you how to put it in via this method. Shut that end off, and then we come round to a lock shield end. Um, on this particular one, it's got a wheel valve on it, but if it hasn't, you'll just have a thread sticking up like that and get pliers on it and just turn it down till it's off. And with this one, don't forget that you've got to remember how many turns that you turn it off. I'll get this top back on. It's always typical when you take it off, isn't it? Typically, it won't go back on. Right, and this is back on. <laughs> so just remember how many turns on. That's to make sure that the system stays balanced because if it's been balanced and you turn it more than whatever it is turned down to, which in my case is two, uh, you could unbalance your central heating system and end up with cold rads here and hot there and a bit of a mess. So it's just a very important little tip that one about the balancing. All right, with that said, uh, what we've got to do now is undo one of the nuts on the Union and we'll start it running into a bowl or a receptacle or whatever you've got till the rad's empty. It should start to run. You might be lucky and have um, a radiator valve that's got a drain cock on it as well, in which case you won't have to do all this. Um, now we'll just go a little bit like that to begin with and then probably slow down. The best we can do after this now is to open the air vent on the other end of the radiator. That will let the air in and allow the water to come out. So I'm going to open the other end, the air key end, and let air in, and that will help speed it out at the end. Empty now, so don't forget first thing, tighten this back up. Just run on there and tighten it up, hold against there and give it a nudge. Okay, that's it, she's back tight again. Now we're ready to put the inhibitor or cleaner into the system. Right, as you can see I've taken the side panel off for easy access. They just ping off. Okay, get a spanner and it doesn't matter whether it's the bleed one or the square plug. It doesn't matter which one. Just undo it, take it out. Okay. There. Now we get our easy fill. We have it here. Um, it literally just screws in. You can do it by hand. Let's say you can do it by hand. It's a bit stiff, but it, it will go in by hand. Um, you can also use the spanner if you prefer. So it doesn't need any PTFE thread or stuff like that on the thread there. PTFE tape, I should say. Um, just screw it in like that. That'll be enough, that'll be good enough. If you're not sure, just put the spanner on it and give it a, an extra extra nudge. You can give it an extra turn, it doesn't matter. I want to really hold it tight in there like that. Okay, now we're ready to pour our fluid in. So here we are, we're going to pour our system cleaner in. Our thing's in place here and it's nice and stiff there, so it's not going to fall away or fall down like that. So it's good that you can do it at an angle like that if you want. So, I'm going to need it straight in, so let's pour it in nice and slowly. It's all going in. So you got to tighten that back up then. Right, tighten this back up. Okay, it's back on. We're done. We've already tightened the joint over there. Turn our radiator valve back on. Don't forget the one that was the lock shield. Turn it the same amount of turns that you turned it off by. In my case it was two turns like that, that one's on, and then just turn the other end on, the ordinary valve, this one's a thermostatic, you might have just a twist valve, but turn it on. Um, we're now ready now, you can hear the air coming out the, the vent, so we'll let that bleed, there might be a little bit of pressure there, there might not be, it depends how much pressure you add in your system. If it fades away, then we just need to turn it off and go down to the boiler and put some more pressure in. Obviously, if you drain the whole system, you will have to shut this off first, put some pressure into the system, about one and a half bar, and then start bleeding all the radiators. Now, that's not enough there, so I've obviously got to put a bit more pressure in. I can tell that there's not enough pressure there. That's a very really low... <laughs> oh, it has made it. There you go. It is there. You can see it. So we're okay. Just let that go for a uh, radiator um, where you find that just the top of it is getting hot, the very top and the bottom, this third down here, uh, is stone cold uh, and it doesn't matter whether you bleed the radiator um, or even if you try balancing the rads, um, you'll still find you just get this top bit hot and the bottom bit is cold. So what is it and what's the problem? Well it's basically black sludge 
crud in the bottom of the radiator and there's really only one way to get it out and that is to take the radiator off uh, take it outside and flush it through so that's what I'm going to do today show you how to do this quite simple and easy job we'll get on it straight away shall we right so first thing off then we're going to isolate the radiator uh, and all we've got to do if you've got a thermostatic is just turn it clockwise all the way down until it stops on mine it's a zero and that side of the radiator is now off so now we go to the other end of the radiator now on my end actually I've got a turn valve but normally what you find is you've got what they call a lock shield valve and you just pull the cap off or if it's got a screw in it undo the screw and then pull the cap off and that will reveal the valve before you go turn this valve off just remember how many times that you've turned the top why I'm asking you to remember that, yours may only be on about a turn or two turns, um, is because this, this valve is used for balancing your system in your house. So when you turn it back on when this job is finished, make sure you turn it on the same amount of turns that you just turned it off. That will mean your system will still remain balanced and you won't end up with rads hot somewhere or a cold rad somewhere else in the house because that rad is now taking all the heat. So it's a fairly important one to remember. Right, so next we're going to undo the unions. Right, we're ready to undo one end of our radiator now. Um, tools I like, adjustable spanner and a pair of footprints, but something else that will go on top of that uh, rad valve to hold against is what you need. I use these to hold against. Now, look, what I'm going to show you here is you get your adjustable spanner and get it on your union nut. Now, don't just pull that up. It comes up this way, all right, to turn it, undo it. So don't just do that because you could break this seal here on the radiator it must be held against otherwise you could damage that joint and that's where these came in I like to put them over the top of the valve like that now you can put cloth and that around it if you want to protect the valve but these valves are a bit old I'm not too worried about them been off a million times um, but you can put a piece of cloth around these footprints you don't want to mark anything and then just hold against and pull up like that all right now once it's gone up by that you can release those grips and just undo it now when you first undo it nothing much is going to come out i'll just pull him looser and you'll see that nothing much is happening there the odd drip but nothing much and that is because you need air to enter the top of the radiator before that can start running so now we're going to move to this end of the radiator at the top because we need now to open an air cock to allow the air to enter the radiator as i've said and which will allow that to run so open your air valve Okay, and let the air in so that the water can run out so now we've just got to wait with a little receptacle on the bottom by the valve to let the water run out when it's all run out we can undo the other side if the water's very slow to come out wedge something between uh, the thread there and the valve just to, to leave it out and it'll make it run a bit faster I use a pair of footprints and you can see now it's really starting to run so now all we've got to do as I say is wait for it to empty then we'll do the other end of the valve undo the thermostatic one right that just leaves our thermostatic end now um, and once again hold against like so and we're going to turn this nut down that way all right to undo it now don't be tempted to unscrew the head to get it out of the way because if you do it'll allow the pin to pop up and you'll get water at the other end you've just disconnected so you've got to do it with this head on all right so don't try and undo it and think it'll be easier because you'll get a little flood uh, and once again with the chrome if you're a bit worried an old towel or something around it like that if you don't want to damage uh, the chrome and uh, Spanner on, this is my house, I'm not too worried. <laughs> Spanner on, hold against, and we should just be able to go down on it like so. And that's now undone. You take that away now because it's all turned. If I have an old bit of towel on the other end, you can still get a few drips out, even though um, it's now empty. Right, so just do that now. Right, once you're undone, just pull your valves out like so, so it's on the clear, the same the other end, just so that it's clear of the pipe, and then we're ready to lift it away. So, now, I'll show you how to lift it off. I'll mind my head on this. <laughs> um, just grab a firm grip on the radiator, alright, and then we're going to lift it off, off the brackets. When you get it off, hold it level, and then tilt it towards the bowl. Because there will be some black sludge in there that will want to come out, and it's pretty nasty stuff. So shake that out. 
once that's out and stop dripping you're quite safe to take it away I'm going to take it out the back and show you now how to flush it through um, there's a nice handy drain ready for this to run out of um, and what we're going to do now is flush it through put it on something like an old towel I've got there we don't want to scratch it okay because we're going to turn this upside down now in order to do it so get your whole rag up the other way and put it on the towel or whatever you've got and you can admire the dust that's in the back of your rag because it always gets here look it's great stuff very <laughs> homely okay so now we're going to show you how to how to flush this through Right, we have our hose here, um, it's connected to my outside tap. Now if you're lucky to have these type of units, which are nice little thin nuts, it's very easy to get a hose on there because uh, it's a perfect kind of fit for half inch like that. Okay, well I've got to hold it on there obviously when, it, when this goes because it's going to need two people, one to turn your tap and one to hold the hose on like that while we flush it through. Now, there will feel a bit of back pressure there so be careful holding it. This rad actually hasn't got anything in it at all. It's mining doors it's fully clean but I'm just showing you this if you've got this problem at home so don't expect to see too much black out of this one <laughs> right it should be clean or cleanish okay so now we're gonna we're gonna do the actual flush there we go there we go as you can see mine's pretty clean because uh it's not actually blocked and mine works fine <laughs> This is just to show you, this is a, if this was really bad, you'd get a lot of black, horrible sludge out of there. All right. but because we've got it up this way, we're kind of trying to flush it through that way. Yeah, let it run. If you keep the hose on, let it run completely clear, and then we're going to go to the other end. And that other end, coming out there. You may need to do this several times until it all runs clear. Depends how bad you're ready. Okay, when you're happy, it's pretty clear. I'm going to turn it up the other way, let it out into a drain. If you've got a drain like this handy, it's very, very useful. <laughs> it doesn't go all over the place too much, does it? Believe me, it is worth doing this. It will make a difference. If the pressure out your hose is a bit slow and it's not very good, my pressure is turned down a bit, turn it up on your main stop pot and give it full pressure so it really goes in there with a blast. You can use a jet trigger in there, might help give it a bit more push. Uh, but get as much pressure in there as you can to get that black sludge out. Well, once you're happy that's all out, we can get the rest out there. You can lift it if it's a double, it's an easy lift. If it's a big double, you might need a hand, alright? Don't try and do it on your own, it's a big red. There you go. That's about it, we're ready now to uh, take her back in and stick her back on. We'll go through that now. Well, here we are, about ready to have back indoors again. We're going to mount it back on the brackets now. If your pipes are a little bit tight on those end of those stalks you can always get someone just to put it back a bit for you like that. Okay if they're a little bit tight um, it's just one of those little tips. Makes it easier to drop the radiator on. Make sure these little rubber inserts don't pop out. They help stop rattle the noises from the radiator when it's heating up. Make sure you don't lose those. And then a straight lift we just literally put it on. I, I tend to go for the bottom ones first just have it I guess but you know it's really up to you if you need two people one each end then do get two people to do it if you don't try and do it on your own if it's a really big radiator honestly you'll do your backing well you can check that your rad's on properly just have a look around the back here you should see it sat inside the little rubber grummet there on the bracket so check the other back side as well and the one down the bottom make sure they're sat in there uh, and then you know it's properly back where it should be. Well, there we are. There we are. You just pop your pipes back in. All right, just stack them in like that and just hold it there and start it with your other hand. They usually just start up straight and easy, like so. All right, do it up. Make sure the other end's in first as well. We do any tightening. Might as well tighten it up, it's in place. Once again, if you don't want to mark your radiator valve, something like an old towel around it like that, just to hold against. Careful when you do up, you don't scratch or knock the plastic cap. So do it from the bottom like that. Don't go too far around, just in case. All right, you'll fill it tight and don't have to go too mad, but enough. Okay, when you fill it, grip there. That's it, I can fill it there. All right, that's that one. And we simply do the other one up. Then you lock your side once again. Once you're there and happy with it, that's it. And that's about it now. We're ready to turn the radiator on and uh, we'll fill her up, shall we? And it, Hopefully this time it should work a dream. Right, lock shield end. Don't forget, you count it how many times. 
but how many times you turn that on do it the same amount that you turned it off all right I know how many mine are, so I'm just going to, not going to bore you with it. But don't forget to do that. Very important. We don't want your system unbalanced when we're finished. So, bleed your red. Near the air coming there. Let it bleed out now. When it's full, we should be ready to go. Turn the heating back on. You've got to get these grill tops off, and they're not as easy as they look. But I'm going to show you that they're not too bad at all. Now, I always start with one side. You'll notice there's a little gap around there, a little washer sits around there, and it just sits on the bottom radiator valve. And it's quite simple, really, because all you've got to do is grab a hold of it and pull up. It'll pop out of there like that, okay, and it'll all come away. And there's our left hand one, and there's our top grid off. Uh, you can leave that right one on if you want, but it will come away. You can pull that one up as well, and it will it'll lift away just by doing that and it's all clear right, and that leaves you clear then to get in there as you can see there's even a bit of dust in mine look at that wow so here we are quickly out put it back on get the right hand side or the left one you know that's the top with a little ring around it place it on over the top of the ridge and slide it down onto your ad valve and switch it down like that okay um, get your top piece slide it in, just lift it under like so, that's in position, get your other side, line it up with the bottom down there to go over there and line it up with the top to go over here, you can see that and then just push it down and there we are, it's back in place. Well the first sort I'm going to show you is this type, uh, this is a single panel and this is the non wraparound type in that I mean the grill doesn't go completely right around the back of the radiator so this is very very easy to do because this panel just lifts off if it's a bit tight just get a little screwdriver down there get it in the hinge there and just pop it up like so once that's popped up you can pull it out and lift that away okay once it's lifted off you've got that side off and then you can just lift the grid away like so you can see put it right up and take it off Okay, I'm going to change the address. It's easy, easy peasy. If you've got that sort, uh, a piece of cake, obviously. But the problem some of you are having uh, is with the other type, which I'll show you now. So, this one here is the one that most of you are having problem removing the grill from. Uh, it kind of wraps around the back. The metal goes right around. It's hard to show you from here because it's under a worktop. But it actually, the metal goes round and down. To make life easier, for all you guys I'm going to take this rad off the wall <laughs> right then so here's our kitchen radiator I've taken it off just for you lot I don't know the things I have to do now then <laughs> take my own rad off there's nothing wrong with it this is the wrap around type that I was talking about you can see that the panel kind of wraps around the back of the radiator so here a closer look at this now this clip you can see it through the back of the rad there and you can see where it dips down there I hope you got it on the camera there and um, you can see where it's kind of holding against the rad grill it's holding that top on with a kind of spring clip you can see the back of the clip there and what you've got to do is get a screwdriver down there now and just release the clip right next tricky part of the job is to pass a screwdriver down through the grill and I don't know if you can see it there alright but put it behind the clip so it clears the radiator okay next part of the operation is just take these bits off just bits of plastic stuck on the back of the rad they do just click off they're a bit tight just get a screwdriver and pop them off but mine are quite loose and that'll leave you with that then let's come to the end of the radiator and get another screwdriver and see if you can pop that off now like so Right, I've just come out of shot there, sorry about that. Just pop it off both sides for the screwdriver. Try not to damage anything if you can. Okay, and you'll find it all pops up like so. And as you can see, there's our horrible clip that was clamping it and causing us all the problems. <laughs> Yeah, it's rather a nasty type of design for these single panels and never mind same then on the other end we take the panel grip off the end and lift it out get the screwdriver get it in there and get it off okay try not to damage anything and we just put it away and we got our top off 
is on the deck. Sorry about this 180 camera operation today, but Jan's not with me. That now leaves us clear to clean through and do the grills. Give it a good old shining up. Get rid of that dust. So if you take a proper look at that now, you can see quite how it goes with the hook mechanism and obviously the two clamp parts that go over the valve ends at the end. You can see quite exactly how it works. When you have a look like this, you can see, ah, I see how it goes and it all comes to you how to do it, doesn't it? But this is the real tricky one um, of the single panel rad. I know some doubles have got a similar mechanism, but most of them have got what are in the video that I've already done, which is a simple lift off as in the first rad uh, I've shown you. Just line it up on top. Like I'm doing it one handed, as I say, Jan's not around today. Get that clip down there in the centre one. You'll know it's in the centre because it's right off each end and literally just push it down and it'll clamp back on, like so. Once it's clamped back on there, we can lift up and get our ends in. As you can see, we've got enough movement, easy to lift the ends up uh, to get the, the end shots in there. And there you are, they just slot in there as you can see. You can see the little lips there, they just literally go in behind there. You can see it there. Okay, down inside there and you're locked in place. Do the other end and we're ready to put it back. Right then, that just leaves us with the... Dropped it. <laughs> the little badges to go in. Yeah, okay, just pop back in there. All right, quite simple, just stick them back. Uh, and that's the job done. Where exactly do I measure the radiator? So. We're going to sort that right this minute. Okay, so here's, here's a radiator, a typical one. This is a, a new modern rad that's already been changed. Okay, so I was asked, do I measure this radiator from the nut valve? There's a nut valve there. Or do I measure it from the end of the valve? Um, or do I measure it from a little part of the, the rad that sticks out? Because some of them have a little union that sticks out about half an inch. Do I measure it from there? No, the answer is no to all those. Where you measure it from is the exact edge of the radiator, which is there. Okay, and measure it across, measure it right across your rad to the edge of the radiator. This rad is typically 600 millimeter wide, which is one of those typical sizes actually for a rad um, of this type. Um, the height again is also measured just from the bottom of the radiator, exactly on the very bottom. Okay, put it on and measure to the top and again this is a typical height radiator of 700 millimeter so this rad is a 600 by 700 high um, which is a standard size radiator uh, you get around these days uh, typical sizes would be a thousand millimeter long about 600 high and that's a, a fairly sort of typical size radiator so that's how you measure them okay if there is a lump sticking out um, and the valve's going into it, don't be tempted to measure from that. I haven't got a rad like that, but if you've got a lump that sticks out and then the valve goes into it, don't measure it from that lump. Measure it from the rad itself, okay? Not from any lumps sticking out and not from any nuts or the back of the valve, okay, <laughs> right there. Um, now, one other thing before we pass on with this subject, if you've got an old radiator uh, and it's 20 year old or more, it could well be an old Imperial rad uh, and you find that when you look at what you can buy in exchange for it, um, that nothing is the same size. And that is a common problem, believe me. Um, so trying to get the right size in metric um, to fit can be a big, big hassle. What to do about it? This is a very nice piece of kit and it's extending union and it's for making up that distance um, in radiators. Um, hello Shadow, she's come, she's just come to see you one. she just wants to be on the camera, so don't worry about it. Um, and what it does, it screws in the radiator like so, and it makes up the difference. Can you see that? If that was screwed in there now, um, that valve would screw into that, and it would make the, mean the pipe would be out here. Except Shadow's head is now in the way of the video. Shadow, <laughs> will you buzz off? Okay, um, so it would be out there, and this is, called an extending union, okay, and you get these in various sizes, they can, they can be quite long. So what I suggest is when you buy a new rad, uh, is to get a slightly smaller one, 
don't go larger if you go larger it won't fit the pipes won't fit the the brad will be up to the pipes and you've got to water the feed unless you want to drain it all down uh, and reel all the pipe works i'm sure you don't want to do that okay so these are the answer aren't they shadow just say meow <laughs> so these are the answer uh, and that you can get these in typical all sorts of sizes um other than that it's a fairly simple job so don't get done by the, the measuring radiators thing, it is, it is a simple thing uh, and always, I always go smaller if I'm changing a rad uh, that they haven't got the size for uh, when you're buying. Uh, just go a bit smaller and then we can make up the distance with these things uh, just to, to fill that gap and you can just shut the rad valves off either end then, uh, drain the actual radiator water that's inside uh, and save yourself a hell of a lot of grief. Okay, well that's about it. Thanks very much for watching and uh, Derek and 33, you know where to come, all my videos. Thanks for watching.